Hello and welcome to this week's question with me, Miles Brining. So, this week's question is, what's a sketch relation? Okay, so let's flip into SolidWorks and I'm going to show you. Okay, so I'm in a part file here. And I'm just going to go ahead and start a sketch in this part file on the top plane. So, for those of you who are new to SolidWorks, uh, a sketch relation is a way of giving your sketch entities, um, let's think of the right word, additional intelligence to over what you, a normal line would have in, say, like AutoCAD 2D. So, it's a type of parametrics which basically means that it can be linked to something else, and when, in simple terms, when you update something, um, and you have something else that's linked to it that also updates. Okay, and there's all sorts of parametrics within SolidWorks. This is probably one of the most basic forms. I'm just going to run through with you some of the different types of relations that you can use. So, the general rule is when we're creating a sketch, like I'm about to do now, you will roughly get the profile to shape and scale. You will then add as many relations as possible and then you would dimension it last. Relations are far more robust than dimensions and therefore you should try and add as many relations as possible. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm just going to go through and show you the different types of relations and how they're made. All right, so I'm going to start with what's called automatic sketch relations. And these are added, as a title may have given it away, automatically as I start to sketch. So if I just go and load the line tool here, and I'm going to go from the origin over here. Again, remember you have to tie stuff to the origin for it to become fully defined. So I'm going to snap to the origin here. Now you'll see next to the uh, pencil that I've got a little symbol there uh, in a yellow square. This is a coincident relation. All right. So that basically means it's going to snap it to the, in this case, the origin, and it's going to be want this end of the point when I click down is going to be tied to that origin. So if I now click out, and I'm going to say I'm going to roughly get the scale about right. So let's say that this first line has to be about 30. So if I go to about 30, there you can see on the on the pointer there, the number. So if I say about it doesn't. It's not important. Don't get it spot on. You just want it to be as close as possible. Then you see if I go up to here, I have snap lines, and you see when I hover over a snap line, that's going to give me a relation which is called a vertical relation. This one here is going to give me a horizontal relation. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to maybe about here, and then pull across to somewhere about here, and you can see I've got another square pop up now, and that's a perpendicular relation. Okay. So that's going to make this line and the line I'm about to click down perpendicular. If I was to snap it this way. That one's slightly different, that's a collinear relation, and it just means they share the same linear path. I don't want that one, I want one over here which is perpendicular. I'm going to come back down to here, and you see it's going to add another perpendicular if I snap it to the snap lines here, and then pull across. So here I've actually got two, I've got a horizontal relation, and it's also giving me a vertical snap, which is the white box. So if I click down here, and then go back to the origin, it's actually going to add two, well, it's going to, it's, it's adding one, which is the vertical relation, which you can see in the right square, and then the left yellow square is a circle within a circle, and that tells me that this sketch, when I click down here, is going to create a enclosed loop, and that's what we're normally aiming for when you first start learning SolidWorks. So I'm going to click down, and you see it doesn't load the the line tool. I'm not I'm not pulling a line out. That's standard behavior when you close a contour. I'm going to deload the line tool. And at this point, you can see when I move these around, again, when you click on a point or a line, be kind of violent with it. If you don't move enough, it won't move. You see here, I'm not being, I haven't moved that far and it hasn't moved the point. But when I get to a certain distance away from the point, when I start dragging it, it will move. All right. And you'll see here that some of them are black. These lines, some of them are blue, and that's to do with the relations, how they're controlling this, and how it's been tied down. The blue lines basically say that I have degrees of freedom. All right, you see as I move these around, these two uh, perpendicular relations are still maintained. Okay. Now I can't actually add any more there without dimensioning it at this point, and I'm not really interested in showing you that in this lesson. 
all right? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you some of the other relations. So all of these so far have been added automatically. I haven't done anything. Okay, it's just the way I've sketched it that's created them. I'm going to show you a few more. So I'm just going to put two lines down here like that. Let's just concentrate on these two lines. So when you want to add a relation which is not automatic, you can do that using the control key. So if I hold down the control and then select these two lines, like so, I'll then get a number of relations on the left. Okay, so I've got things like parallel, I've already shown you guys perpendicular. So if I do parallel, you see then that these two lines will be um, parallel to one another. They've got too many degrees of freedom, so sometimes they can move around in an unexpected way. But you can see here as I move them, they're still parallel, which is good. They also have a number next to them. This is to give you a corresponding uh, reference between the lines that uh, this parallel is affecting. If I do hover over the relation, you can see that it does highlight the lines in pink that this parallel is affecting. And you can see that it's got the same number as well. Okay, that's probably easy to see. See, there's a three there and there. When you're done, you can also um, delete them. If, if you make the wrong one, okay? So if you just click on it, press the delete key, or alternatively right click and then go delete. You'll see then, then they're now independent of one another. Another one I could do on this would be a collinear relation. So let's just actually put one uh, near the other end, like so. And if I select both lines here and then go collinear, you can see when I move one, the other one has to share the same linear path, okay? There is also things uh, you can get without using a control key. You can just click on one line and then maybe this make this one horizontal. Maybe I'll click on this one and make it vertical. It doesn't matter where I drag this line, it will all, this one will always be horizontal and this one will always be vertical. Again, I can delete these relations like so and then that constraint is then removed. Another one you can do is equals. Again, is a really handy relation and it just means when I move one around okay these lines will always be the same I've got too many degrees of freedoms here so basically if I just take an endpoint and just fix it well I try not to use fix if you can help it okay there's no parametrics involved in fix so try to avoid it if you can so if I fix that down you can see when I move around it doesn't matter on the direction um, the lines are always going to be the same length this is particularly good at centering things Okay, um, all right, or if you've got a lot of lines that need to be the same. It's also good with circles. So if I was to delete these two lines, all right, let me show you one more. So if I put some circles down like this, and like so, so there's a bunch of circles. Now the worst, what I wouldn't do here is dimension these all individually. Say they're all 10 mil holes. I wouldn't want to do that. What I'd want to do is select all of them like so, just, just do a drag selection, make sure they're all selected, make them all equal. And that means when I move one, you see they will change. Then I can just go ahead and then dimension one on its own, let's say that's 10 mil. And you can see then if I make a change to this now, I'll make it 12 mil, they all update. Okay. And there's a whole range of different relations you can use. Okay. But they're the most basic ones. And I hope that's been some help to you guys. Thank you for watching.